Hello there, everybody. Happy Halloween. Welcome to Star Wars Lads. Today we are continuing our Legends Book Club. It's been a little bit since we've done Legends Book Club, but we specifically wanted to save this review towards the end of the month. And with Andor accelerating our schedule for other content, we wanted to save Death Troopers for Halloween because this is the main horror novel in Star Wars. It's the main one most people talk about. It's one of the few times we've really attempted to do horror in Star Wars. So we wanted to give you guys our thoughts on Death Troopers. But before we do so, please hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel for continued Star Wars content. We are on the road to 1,000 subs, so all your subscriptions really matter. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. It'll really help us out and help us continue to give you great content and even better content moving forward. It's the best way to show us that you support our channel and want to see more from us. Also, comment below. Let us know what you thought of Death Troopers, if you've read it or if you want to read it and you hear our thoughts and, and it makes you curious. We are going to go into spoilers, by the way, but maybe some of you don't care, especially for a, a book that's 13 years old. Uh, you might not mind the spoilers. It might intrigue you for the future. If you're still in that horror feel and you haven't checked out the Star Wars Lads, Holiday Special number two, Terrifying Tales of the Sith. You're going to want to check that out. That was posted last week. So let's get into our Legends Book Club here. And as usual, we format this review in multiple different sections. We start out first with the writing and the story. This is our general thoughts on the overall narrative and the way it was written in the book. Senek, what were your thoughts on Death Troopers? Yeah, I think overall, this was actually quite a pleasant read. I think it's also pretty important to note that to kind of add to the whole Halloween horror vibes, Liam and I both read the book uh, through the audiobook format. So there's a lot more sound effects, you know, character voices that really add to it. Ambiance is a huge thing, especially in horror. So getting to hear some of like the room tone and sounds just as it is was very cool. Um, it was it was fun. It it gave me what I wanted from Star Wars horror. Um, there are certain things that remove some stakes uh, from the overall plot line, and that does kind of affect some level of enjoyment. It is the thing I think when most people read this book will either love or hate about it. It's a very on the nose legends thing to do, especially um, in the book, and it does affect a lot of like the latter third of the book. Um, but I would say it was pretty well paced. Uh, there were some very interesting characters, some very like complex characters for like a horror that could it could have just been like a whole out like slasher sort of thing, or we've seen like in zombie films like a, or like in The Walking Dead where it's it's just the horrors and the horrors that are coming at you. But it was pretty interesting how it was built up and how it was executed as well, how personal it got. I thought all those elements were quite cool. Um, but there, there, there are things with certain characters um, that I think could have been a little bit more deeply explored. There are times where we spent several chapters just working through things as they're happening in real time, which wasn't always necessary. I think it does slow down some of these character arcs and journeys that we go through. Um, but uh, overall, I, I, I would say it was quite a fun read. And I think the execution, especially because of the audiobook, is quite solid. I agree. I thought Joe Schreiber does a great job writing the horror elements. It is a dense book. It has some pretty disturbing imagery that's described in terms of its horror that is built up. But it's a very quick read. I really enjoyed the pace. Horror movies are almost always two hours or less. And... Schreiber wrote a book that is short <laughs> and so that was nice that we got a really a quick fast thrilling pace read doesn't have too many characters which is nice it centralizes on a group that always works well and the zombie elements work too now I think when we're talking about the general plot it is kind of hard to do zombie Star Wars without it being exactly what you're expecting it to be and it was exactly what I like. I felt like this book was very predictable. I felt like people died who I expected to die. I felt like the uh, the plot points, the like how the virus was created, that's very predictable too. So on the predictability scale, if you're somebody who's really into horror fiction, this is probably going to do nothing for you. Probably read this book a hundred times. Really the entire gimmick is that it's Star Wars horror. And I think on that level, it utilizes the Star Wars elements enough 
to where it, it makes it quite interesting the way he describes stormtrooper zombies and the way he describes these ships and the way the ships look the how you know also making this different from alien was going to be tough i don't know if it quite made it different enough from alien but alien doesn't have zombies so i guess it's like the alien vibe with zombies it adds a little bit to the element like you said we listened to this on audiobook and I really, I wasn't going to do this one on audiobook. I'm usually an audiobook person. I wasn't going to because it's so short, but I caved because I didn't have that much time to sit down and read. And I loved the audiobook. The audiobook is honestly one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to in terms of its sound effects, its sound design, the way it's able to utilize tension and music. All of that is super effective. Definitely enhances my enjoyment of this story. I think if I read this book, I probably would have a little lesser opinion on it than if I had been listening to it. But I do have, you know, it's not, it's not even close to the best story I've listened to on audiobook, but the, just the book itself, the way it was made, the audiobook, the way it was made really, really dug it. So if you're somebody who's into audiobooks or haven't given audiobooks a try and you would like to try this, this is definitely a great one to do. It's also pretty much a one-off story. So you can Try it out. It's only, I think, a six and a half hour audiobook. Get it done and, and enjoy it because it it's definitely going to keep your interest the way it's done. But let's talk about some of those characters. And next, our section is the character section. And we have a pretty small group of main characters in this book, but they are effective. We have the brothers Trig and Kale Longo, who are kind of our main characters at the beginning of the book. And are still main characters throughout the book, but have a lesser role, I guess, through the second half. We also have the Doctor Zahara Cody, who I found to be one of the most interesting characters. We have the captain of the prison guard, Jareth Satoris. We have the droid Waste. And then we also have, as you were referencing earlier with the legends, trying to connect everything back to the films. We have not just cameo appearances, but <laughs> full character appearances for Han Solo and Chewbacca, who are inmates on this prison barge. And they are, of course, one of the few people that are surviving this thing. So, Senek, what were your thoughts on the characters we have here and the way they were all integrated into the story? Well, I'll start with the original characters because that those should be the selling points for the story. Um, especially if you look at like horror films, horror novels. The best part about those is that those aren't characters that have a life past the book, unless it's like a direct sequel or something, unless they're like the final girl. And we get some elements of those. I'd say if there is a final girl, it is the Har Cody, our doctor, and who's quite complex, honestly. She's not well liked by other Imperials on the barge. She prefers being with the inmates who are sick and helping them out. Um, she's kind of a rich girl who kind of went down this path and still has like good morals and decency to her. And she works through her own internal imposter syndrome and struggles. And as the zombie outbreak occurs, you know, her reliance on her droid waste and stop trying to stay alive. I thought she was quite a great female POV. I think stars even today with the Ahsokas and Padmes and Rays of the world kind of struggles to have very complex females. And I was very, very happy to listen to her thoughts and her interactions with like Sartorius and all that. I thought all that was really cool. Um, Sartorius is like, oh man, he is a menace of a man. He's, he's a pure psychopath. I think that was one of my favorite lines when he's talking to the warden um, before his untimely death at Sartorius's hands. Uh, he was like, you know, on this exam, you, guess what your score is? Like, you and I both know we don't need to know how, what score I got. Like, we already know how crazy it's going to be. And it is. He is a messed up dude. And I hated re listening to his chapters. I, I really did because it was just like, oh, man, who's he going to hurt now? Who's he going to, like, uh, just, like, shit on right now? But his final, like, final act was quite – interesting i think it's because like he's like whatever my life has already been horrible i've got daddy issues all this and that but ah eh, might as well do one good thing i guess and i thought i thought that was pretty cool and very much fitting of like a horror 
anti-hero villain of sorts. Um, Trace and Kale, tr sorry, Trig and Kale. Uh, Trig is the kid. He's just the one who's in shock about everything. So he's fine, but I, I think the richest parts of his character come at the very beginning when his connections to his father and what his father was doing as a mercenary and then his interactions with Han and Chewie. Because on his own, he's not all too interesting. He's more just a scared little kid. I enjoyed his brother, um, but he was always a goner. Literally every scene I knew, it was like, all right, he's going to be the one to die. And there was a moment there where I thought he wasn't. And then when it happened, I'm like, well, at least it was this way instead of the way it could have been. Yeah, I mean, I guess it really does come down to, unfortunately, Han and Chewie. They're the only people in you know, a secure, well, solitary room. It's obviously sealed off. And then once they're introduced, they're immediately given antivirus that had just been developed by Zahara. They managed to have like a whole like exhaust vent or something collapse on them and not be bitten. Because of course they can't be bitten. It, it was fine. Like they're fun. I actually liked the Han voice actor. He got the mannerisms right. You know, the voice was off a little bit. I enjoyed some of the Chewy internal dialogue. I thought this was probably some of the strongest stuff that we've had of Chewy as a character, even if I don't love the setting. And like that whole psychological thing that happens with him was also a very interesting chapter to listen to. It's a fun group. It is a very horror film inspired group. Um, the vibes with all these characters, they're very complex. I liked all that stuff. It's just when you add in Han and Chewy, any chapter with them, the stakes were lost. But the scenes that we had with them, I thought they were handled well enough. Uh, it, they could have been a lot more obnoxiously riffing on the original trilogy. But here it was like, okay, the mannerisms are there, but at least they're fitting and appropriately conceived for whatever this genre of Star Wars horror is going to be. So overall, probably a very strong cast, just weighed down by the two big elephants in the room. I, I felt like the biggest surprise of this whole book was how well written most of the characters were because you know horror stories are infamous for having mostly bad characters besides your main couple and this story had quite a bit of good horror there's also some surprising psychological horror elements like we get a whole like deep dive into the psychology of what this vi antivirus is doing to chewbacca which was an interesting little page i guess is how long it was but it was a, it was interesting i i thought that was really cool also a nice little look at how the virus works in general i thought cody zahara cody is the best character by far in this book she has some really interesting development she's kind of alone on this ship where the guards don't like her because they think she fraternizes with the inmates too much she's had suggested to have like actual relationships with some of these inmates but she also spends time with the inmates all the time. She's willing to keep them alive where the guards don't really care about them. They're just there for their job. So her disconnect with the guards, so she doesn't really feel imperial, but she also is di disconnected from the prisoners because they're prisoners and she's from this wealthy family and she's kind of caught in between two worlds. I thought that actually worked quite well. And the first 10 chapters or so I thought were pretty heavily carried by her character development plus whatever tension was building in the story but in terms of characters she was really solid kale and trig i thought were pretty standard star warsy protagonists they didn't do anything that really made them favorites for me or standouts they were always kind of my least favorite character povs to follow Waste, I actually really liked this, the droid. Star Wars droids, you would think robots would be one of the harder things to write, but Star Wars droids almost always steal whatever moments they're in. So I thought Waste was another good addition. Sartorius, like you were saying, I thought he was a really interesting character, kind of one of those types of horror characters you need about, especially in a zombie story of like, oh, who's worse, the monster or the person who's turning into a monster himself? And he does have redeeming qualities, though. So I, I liked his arc all the way, pretty much his full circle. And it's through him that we get to learn about the virus and learn about what these Imperials have been doing who are trapped on the Star Destroyer, uh, cannibalizing yeah. each other. That was yeah. that was another cool horror element to bring in. But Han and Chewie definitely hurt the momentum and the tension and the pacing of this story because 
we know they're not going to die. He doesn't put them in danger too often, Schreiber. He he puts them in scenes with other characters who can be in danger, so it doesn't completely negate it. But at the same time, it's like, well, anything that they're doing isn't going to be quite as exciting because we know that they've got the plot armor of they're never going to die because they don't die in this story. So unfortunately, I thought that was kind of a mistake. And that, honestly, that is a type of decision that almost seems like that com comes down from the top. Like they read it and they're the people who the higher ups read this book and were like, we need a star Wars character in there because there's nobody who's like really a star Wars character. How about you throw Han Solo on the prison barge? It almost felt like an afterthought. I, I still thought both of them were well, perfectly well written. I just personally was kind of rolled my eyes when, characters from the original trilogy showed up because it just felt like oh here we go again legends everything has to have an original trilogy or prequel trilogy character in it like everything but anyway that wraps up our character section of this so we usually our third and final section is usually impact on star wars history well there's not too much impact on star wars history especially reaching usually that's a way to connect the legends version of a story to a canon version we've also read this is a Star Wars horror story, and there are very few Star Wars horror stories. There's your impact on Star Wars history. It's one of the first Star Wars horror things we've ever gotten. So we're going to move on to our final thoughts, wrap up, and score out of five. Senek, what are your final thoughts, and what is your score? I think it is a surprising book, um, and that comes partly because of the medium and my unexpected enjoyment of the pacing and the characters. I thought... They've handled all the tropes really well until we get Han and Chewbacca, especially because I personally wanted with how the book begins with two groups of five being split up on the Star Destroyer. I thought it would have been fascinating to see what happened to that second group and have them be like the sudden antagonist at the very end. And the ending does become a little bit too sweet, like the ending of like them like giving some random guards note to his wife being invited for tea i was like oh okay like of course our horror movie either has to have like we barely escaped or like things are pleasant once more like it was all or nothing for them and i don't think he necessarily needed that as star wars sort of ending but again like i said the medium that uh, we experienced it in the month that we read it in and not having to really try to fit this into our head canon of bef prior to legends being introduced certainly makes the read a lot more enjoyable for me. I think it, it wasn't anything too shocking. It's a three if I just read the book. It's getting a half star because I listened to it. I have very, very similar thoughts. This story is pretty simple and safe amongst star uh, horror in general. The novelty is that it's Star Wars horror, which I think it sufficiently does well. It, it incorporates Star Wars mo moments and characters well enough I would have preferred to see them go a direction that was a bit more unique rather than just being like, we have Han Solo here, so it's now Star Wars horror. But I think he does a good enough job writing this. I thought the language and the horror elements of it, the way it's described, all of that worked quite well. Surprisingly, a couple deep characters in this book that weren't Han and Chewbacca. And overall, the atmosphere is really solid. I was going to say the exact same score, three and a half, and also say that I was going to bump it up a half for the audiobook. I think the audiobook's fantastic. It genuinely is one of the best audiobooks with sound effects, music, and atmosphere that I've listened to. So if you are interested in checking out this story and you want to uh, try out Audible or something for a month and get a free audiobook, this is a good one to listen to. Unfortunately, October's over, but maybe you want to continue horror into next month check it out i think it's worth your time so that's going to conclude this month's legends book club thank you all so much for watching as usual not with this month's but we usually do a poll for what the next month's book will be book or comic book the poll is coming out tomorrow so vote on that and the top one we will read for next month's legend book club or reread if we've already read it also, read along with us. That's kind of the whole point of doing these polls early is so that all of you know that the story we're going to talk about and then we'll reiterate it on the show. So read along with us or reread along with us. We want you guys to enjoy the Legends content that we're enjoying. 
and talk about it down in the comments below. So if you haven't yet commented and you've read Death Troopers, let us know what your thoughts are. Like the video, please, and subscribe to our channel. Like I said, we're on the road to 1,000 subs, so all of your subscriptions really matter. It's the only way to truly show that you enjoy our content and want to see more. If you're still in that horror feel and you haven't checked out Terrifying Tales of the Sith, you're going to want to check that out. That was posted last week that you can find that on the channel, as well as our latest Andor coverage and or episode eight review, as well as episode nine predictions and speculations. And we also did a review for Tales of the Jedi. So you can check out all of that content. We posted four videos last week. Check all of those videos out. And we will continue to do Andor this week on Wednesday and Friday, as always, until the end of the show. So thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time.